Hi, I'm your host Tish Tansel, and this is Urban Esque Living. Hi, welcome to Urban S Living, and today I'm going to help answer that question that a lot of you have about those finds at the farmer's market. You have an abundance of peppers, and what are you going to do with all of these peppers? I've given peppers away to friends, I've given peppers away to family, I've been snacking on peppers, so I decided I'll just pickle some peppers and that will help me to have some peppers down the line. So one of the first things we're going to do in order to pickle these peppers is we're going to make a brine. And a brine is basically a solution that's going to help preserve the peppers. And because we like to do things natural around here, we're going to be using apple cider vinegar. That's our first ingredient. And we're going to add this to a non-reactive pot. And this is cast iron and it has a lot of good vitamins and minerals in it because it's made from the earth. So we're going to add that. I am adding organic coconut sugar because I like the way it tastes and um, also I'm not really into white sugar. And brown sugar actually is not anything different than white sugar. It's white sugar with molasses. So I'm putting this in the pot. now. Salt is a preservative, so we're going to add some salt to this as well. Not a lot, but just enough so that it helps to preserve our products. Turmeric is a wonderful spice, great flavor, so my pickled peppers are getting turmeric. And these particular peppers taste wonderful with mustard. So rather than having to always dip them in mustard, I want to give them a mustard flavor. So I'm going to actually put mustard, powdered mustard in our brine. And I'm just gonna stir that. And last but not least, this is just one of my personal favorites. I love pickled ginger. And because these peppers are a little bit on the sweet side, I want to add a little bit of an interest and you know add a little bit more of a flavor profile to these peppers. So I'm going to add some ginger and this is fresh ginger root in slices. So I'm going to turn on my cooktop and we're going to let this simmer for about five minutes to let those flavors merge. And you can simmer this on a low temperature. I like to start my induction cooktop high and because it cooks so quickly, I start it high and then as I see it warming up, I turn it down. And the reason why we're only letting this go for five minutes is because induction cooktops cook very quickly. On a regular cooktop, it would take almost five minutes for this to heat up. But on an induction cooktop, this heats up almost immediately. Remember to stir that so you can get all of the flavors in. So make sure all of our peppers are packed in. And this is a little bit dark. If you want it clearer, you can make this with the clear white vinegar. You can use white sugar and you can use a little bit less spice. And that way you can see the peppers if that's the look that you want. I'm going for a 
flavor profile, not so much a look profile. So it is gonna be a little bit dark, but it is gonna have a lot of flavor. And that's basically what I'm going for. That's your decision. If you want it a little bit lighter, then by all means, use white sugar and white vinegar. And that way you can see the color coming through. So right now, what I'm going to do is fill the containers with our brine. How about that? That was perfect. The perfect amount for three pints of peppers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put the top on these. And we're going to let this sit at least for a week. And then we're going to give them a try. After that, these peppers are good to go. If you like this recipe or more, please go to my Facebook page. You can find it at Urban as Living or at Tish Tamsel. And tweet me on Twitter. Let me know how I'm doing. Thank you for joining me on Urban as Living. Have a good day. Look at me. As a parent, of course you want to protect your kids. Sometimes you know just what to do. Sometimes you just try your best. But when your child is sick, antibiotics may not be the answer. Antibiotics don't cure colds, flu, or most sore throats. Talk with your child's doctor or nurse and learn how to help your child feel better. Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and today I have a low-cal, delicious snack for you. If you're watching your weight like I am, you don't want to have to always count your calories. You want to just know that you can pop it in your mouth, and it's good and nutritious and low-cal. Well, we're going to have stuffed peppers, but not the kind of stuffed peppers that you normally think of with the cream cheese. We're going to do this a different way. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Tish Tansel, the host of Urban S Living. Join me Saturday afternoons at 2.30 on Comcast TV 68. I look forward to cooking with you. Hi, welcome to Urban S Living and I'm Chef Tish with a fitness tip. We're all watching our calories and this is a perfect time of year to indulge in the fresh fruits and vegetables in the state of Michigan. So I'm going to show you how to do some stuffed peppers. And usually when you think of stuffed peppers, you're thinking of a pepper that's cooked, stuffed with meat, with cheeses, with all kinds of things that can just blow your waistline out of proportion. Well, this is a different type. We're going to take these beautiful yellow peppers that I found at the farmer's market, and we're going to actually stuff these. And this is such a quick and easy snack recipe. Now, these peppers, have a lot of vitamin C, they have a lot of fiber, and these are a little bit on the sweet side, so it actually kind of satisfies a number of different taste sensations, plus it keeps you full. So what we're going to do is just take this, and you really don't have to cut off that edge because that kind of gives you something to hold on to. We're just gonna slice this in half. Now if you're good, you can slice it directly in half so you get two little garnishes at the end of each one that you can hold on to. Now because this pepper has this little bit of a membrane on the inside, we're just gonna take our paring knife and go around the edge. And we're gonna cut that out because we need to make some room for the insides. Okay, so now I have all of my peppers that I'm going to be using hollowed out and there are no seeds on the inside. What I'm going to do is just arrange them on my platter and if you want to use something a little bit fancier, say like if you're going to be using these as appetizers, you can put them on a fancier tray, but this is just like a little girl's uh, luncheon. And if your peppers have some dark spots, you can just cut those off. Now, if 
if you want, you can stuff your peppers prior to putting them on the plate, but I find that it's a little bit easier when they're already lined up. We made a nice little circular design. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our salsa. Now, if you have a homemade salsa, you can use that, or if you have a store-bought salsa, you can use that. So, either way, it's fine. And we're just going to take a regular tablespoon, and we're going to put the salsa right in the center of each one of our peppers. So now our pepper is stuffed with salsa. Okay, now, that's beautiful. Our plate of peppers is prepared and ready to snack on. This is a wonderful low calorie snack that you can serve to your guests or you can just have while you're sitting around watching television. It's high in vitamin C, high in fiber, and a great flavor. And it will help fill you up without filling you out. That's very urban-esque. And you can also just Eat them pepper by pepper. You don't know, you don't have to make a plate of this in order to eat this and enjoy this snack. This is something you can eat at any time of the day or night, and it's going to be a very healthy alternative to a higher calorie snack. If you want to find out more information about this recipe and others, please go to my Facebook page. That's at Urban S Living, or you can find me at Tish Tamsel. I'm also on Twitter, so you can like me on Twitter. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Urban Esque Living. Have a good day. shelter here I come and no I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged that's a stereotype I just belong to a total loser I'm a good dog so if you want a pet adopt and if you see Randy tell him he dropped his wallet hi welcome to another edition of urban s living I am your host chef Tish Tansel and today I have a tip for you that's going to make your life a lot easier. And that tip is sharpen your kitchen knives. If you've ever tried to cut into a piece of meat or to cut some vegetables, you'll find that having a dull knife makes a bad presentation. So what you need to do is make sure that your kitchen knives are sharpened. And if you don't want to send them out to a professional, you can sharpen them yourselves at home with several different types of sharpener. The most economical type of sharpener that you can find is actually one of these. This is called a sharpening stone. I found this at the dollar store actually a few years ago. And as you can see, it's still in pretty good shape. The sharpening stones will last forever. This is probably how your grandmother sharpened her knives. My grandma sharpened her knives with a sharpening stone and I grew up learning how to use one of these. But if you don't want to try to learn how to use a sharpening stone, then the next best thing for you to do is to find one of these, which is a handheld knife sharpener. I found this at one of the local stores for a great deal. I got it for under $9. Typically, one of these can run almost $20 to $30. So if you find a bargain on a knife sharpener, I'd say grab it because it will make your life a lot easier in the kitchen. And it's very simple to use. You just take the flat end, place it down on your countertop, and you're going to take one of your dull knives, and you're just going to run it through. Now this is a smaller knife, it's called a paring knife. So I'm running it through this first slot, which is for a fine blade. And that's what a paring knife is, it's a very fine blade. This other side is for a coarser knife, which is more of your chef's knife. So you just run it through, 
about four or five times and your knife is sharpened and you're good to go. Hi, I'm Tish Tanso, the host of Urban S Living. Join me Saturday afternoons at 2.30 on Comcast TV 68. I look forward to cooking with you. I'd like to drop out of high school and get a meaningless job that makes me feel bad about myself. I'd like to fall victim to the old boys network. I don't want anybody to notice me. I just want to fly under the radar. I want to splatter against the glass ceiling. I don't have an opinion. I want to be a straight C student. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. <laughs> I mean, I want to succumb to peer pressure all of my life. I'm going to be a best-selling author <laughs> and win the National Book Award. I'm going to be a marine biologist. Wait. I take my back. I'm going to be a biomedical engineer. I think I'll be the president. I'm going to be secretary of state. World class chef, right here. Race car driver. Artist. Paleontologist. Film director. Surgeon. Teacher. Scientist. Olympian. I'm going to be the boss. I'm going to change the world. Welcome to Urban S. Living. I'm your host, Chef Tish Tansel, and today I'm doing a show on relish. I love relish. I love to put relish over my vegetables. I love to put relish in my salads. If you like to use relish on your hot dog, this show is for you because I'm going to show you how to customize a relish to your flavor. That's Urban S. What I want in my cucumber, some onion, some sweet peppers, garlic, and I want it to have a little bit of a heat to it, so I am putting in a jalapeno pepper. So what I'm first going to do is chop up everything in the food processor. Okay, so now all of our vegetables are chopped up in our food processor. So the next step we're going to do is to remove the vegetables from the food processor and put them in a bowl. So as you can see, there are some pieces that are not done. Um, they're a little bit larger, so we're gonna pick those out because we don't want those in our relish. Okay, so there are a couple of big pieces in here that were missed by the food processor. Sometimes that happens, it's not a big deal. Okay, so what we need to do is extract some of the water from our vegetables. And how we're going to do that is by adding some salt. This is about one eighth of a cup of salt. And don't worry, we're going to be draining it. And I'm really not going to add that much of it. I'm going to add about half of that because I really don't like to add a lot of salt to my food. I think that uh, sometimes food is over salted and that's one of the benefits of making your own homemade relish is that you can gauge how much salt is going to be in it. Okay, so we're just going to let this sit for 30 minutes. Stay tuned and when you come back, we'll go to the next step. Every year in the U.S., more than 350,000 hearts suddenly and unexpectedly stop. But they didn't have to. Early intervention could have saved their lives. I'm Sean Robinson. Given my family's history with heart disease, I'm here to shed light on sudden cardiac arrest, a condition we need to stop. SCA is deadly and can happen to anyone, but chances are greater in African Americans. Most high-risk patients do not receive recommended treatments. Over 60% of African Americans think they don't need to go to the doctor after experiencing heart disease symptoms. It's time to arrest your risk. Talk to your doctor. Stop SCA before it stops you. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes and our relish and salt mixture has started to sink the water and we don't want all of that salty water in our relish and this is actually helping to combine the flavors. The next part of our sweet pickled 
relish that we're doing is we have to make up the mixture that's actually going to add that relish flavor to our relish. And so we're going to take two cups of apple cider vinegar. We're going to take one cup of honey, or actually this is about a half a cup because I really don't want it that sweet. So we're gonna combine a half a cup of honey. And FYI, if you use a cup to measure honey, you can actually spray it with some nonstick spray and that helps to get that honey out of the cup without all of your honey sticking to the sides. This is ground turmeric and that's one teaspoon of ground turmeric and that goes in our pot. And because I love mustard relish, this is one and a half tablespoons of mustard relish. Okay, so while our mixture is simmering for five minutes, what I'm going to do is to drain our mixture of our relish, onions, cucumber, and garlic. Because we need to drain off some of the water before we add it. Plus, the onions are very strong and you really don't want your relish to be overwhelmingly onion tasting. So I'm going to press this down a little bit to squeeze out some of the liquid to it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that rest for a second. And we have a few more minutes before this is ready. But you should smell it, oh my goodness. The mustard in here is just really opening up your sinuses and that's one of those great things about mustard that I love is that you eat it and you breathe in and it just kind of clears your, your whole breathing passages. So that's wonderful. Plus it has a little kick. I love mustard with a kick. This is really going to be a very pungent relish. It's going to be great over hot dogs and it's going to be great in your deviled eggs and great with your Thousand Island salad dressing. So there's a lot of wonderful things that you can do with relish besides just putting them on a hot dog. Now as you can see, this is how much liquid drained off of our relish mixture. So now that it's drained, what I'm going to do is lower the temperature and I'm going to add this relish mixture to our liquid. And we're gonna let this simmer for about 30 minutes. And this is a beautiful, beautiful color. color. Okay, so now our spices that we added, our turmeric and our mustard are combining with the onion and the cucumber. And it's really a wonderful smell. I hope you try this because it will only enhance your hot dogs it will make those deviled eggs incredible. And if you make your own tiles and island dressing, it will add a little kick to that as well. But when people come over to your house, they're going to be looking forward to your special relish mixture. So we're going to give this 30 minutes to simmer. Stay tuned. I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. If, if I told, told you to do, do something, something, you'd do it, right? You'd do it, right? You'd do it, right? You'd do it, right? If you want to be cool, that is. I can make you cool. If you want to be popular. If you want to be popular. Like me. If you want to be hot. If you want to be hot. If I told you to dress like me, talk like me, would you? You'd, you'd do, do it, it, right? If, if I, I told, told you water runs uphill, would you trust me? I'm not a doctor. But I play one on TV. You wouldn't believe me just because, just because I'm famous. Because I'm an actor. Because I'm, on because TV. I'm a singer. Because I'm, in because I'm a recording because I'm a artist. Because, because I play a different person on a TV show. Don't think for yourself. Do you think everything they say is true? That's true. Question, Question everything. everything. No one should tell us how we should look. No one should tell you how you should look. Pay attention to the way women and girls are portrayed in the media. On television, movies, magazines, ads. The way we are portrayed. Pay attention to what you're watching. I'm, I'm a celebrity. celebrity. So do, do what, what I, I say. say. Watch, watch what, what you watch. 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 watch what you watch. Watch what you watch. Now, 30 minutes have passed and you can really smell all of the wonderful flavors that are in this relish. You are going to relish your relish. <laughs> now, it's a bit warm and uh, 
we're going to put these in containers because not only do I like relish, but I would like to share my special relish with my friends and family. So I went to the store and got these little mason jars. This is about a pint size. They come a little bit smaller than this if you want to give a little bit less and spread the joy. But I cleaned these out. When we do a show on canning, I'm actually going to show you the canning process. But because we are going to be eating these right away, we don't need to can them. We're not going to be storing these on a shelf in the basement for months to come. This is something that's going to be eaten within the next few weeks because it has this vinegar in it, it's going to last a bit longer. You can store these in the refrigerator and they will do just fine. Not long term, but for the short term and as gifts, these are fine to give without the canning process. So what we're going to do is take this nice big funnel that's made for canning. It sits right in the mouth and it helps to make sure that the outside of our cans stay clean. And we're going to get a scoop of our relish. That is beautiful. It tastes fantastic. This is great for gifts. It's going to be great on top of my salad. and. If you want the recipe to find out how you can make this wonderful relish yourself, please go to my Facebook page or tweet me on Twitter and I can send you the recipe or you can just get the recipe on the website. But like I said, this is an urban -esque thing to do. Making your own gifts and giving them to friends and family. Have a good day. To all you kids who are interested in starting swimming, get into it. It's a lot of fun, it's a great sport, and I've always enjoyed it since I was six. So get into it, set some goals, just enjoy the water, and you'll have a blast.